Good morning, church. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Who's ready to worship today? Yeah? Who's ready to worship? Woo! All right, we're ready. Lord, we give you our time. We give you our attention this morning. We just start our day in your presence. We're so thankful.
we sing my shield, shield in my shelter. It's my defense. I claim it over and over again. I plead the blood. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus, my shield, my shield in my shelter. It's my defense. I claim it over. words we're singing this morning. We're pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives today. In Philippians 3 verse 10, Paul is talking and he's actually in prison. And he says, I want to know Christ and to experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Who wants to experience that power today? I do. I want to suffer with him. So it's a two part, I want to suffer with him. I want to sit in the grieving and sit in the death of the cross staring at his death so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Lord, we thank you for the power that's in your blood. God, we thank you for the resurrection life that you give us free access to. Lord, we want to experience your presence. I thank you for the words of Paul as he's even in prison. God, that he's even in this place of prison and, and persecution and he's sitting in a, in a place of, Lord, all that matters is you. God, all that matters is you. Lord, today we turn our eyes to you. God, you have all of our attention. You're all that matters to us. Lord, I pray that we would know you, that we would know you in death and we would know you in life, that we would know you in the resurrection and we would know you in the suffering. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your blood. be made known to us today in Jesus' name.
on, just declare that today. Oh, let us see your glory, see your glory. My eyes will see your glory. Oh, yeah. Mm. Speaks the whisper in the silence. Sleeps the harvest in the sea. Come on, let's give it up, everybody. Come on, let's give thanks to who he is. Praise the Lord. Our God reigns. Amen. Can you say that out loud? Our God reigns. Say my. My God reigns. You know, I was looking at the series that we've been in called Christ the Healer. And uh, one of my favorite chapters in the book of Matthew is Matthew chapter 8. And it starts off real simple, but it has a leper who comes before the Lord. And it says that he came and he worshipped him. He bowed down. He worshipped him. 
And that, then as he was worshiping him, he says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me. You know, Jesus didn't hesitate. You know what he said? I am willing to be healed. And we see this repeated throughout the scripture. Later on in, in Matthew 8, we see a centurion who has a servant at home and he's dying. And of course, he sends people to talk to Jesus. And, and as the question is asked about his servant, Jesus says, I'm willing, I'll, I'm, I'll come. And he said, no, Lord, you don't even need to come to my house. I'm not worthy as a Gentile for you to come. But if you speak the word only, if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. Isn't that powerful? It, it, it was so powerful that as this man continued to talk, Jesus said, I haven't found that kind of faith in all of Israel. I think we need to pay attention to stuff like that. Later on, Peter's mother-in-law is sick, and Jesus healed her. I was joking with Pastor Kyle earlier. That's a pretty powerful thing when he healed the mother-in-law. That's, that's pretty awesome. I had, an, I had a phenomenal mother-in-law, Miss Janie. It was amazing. But then they brought all the demon-possessed and all the sick and all those that were afflicted by the enemy, and it says that Jesus healed them all. Healed them all. They, they, he didn't leave anybody out. And so today, let's just put our hands out. If you have a need, it doesn't matter, spirit, soul, body, God's big enough to lean in and take care of that need. Amen. So, Father, we just, wow, we just come before you and we, we proclaim, my God reigns. You reign over everything, every sickness, every disease, every heartache, every hardship. Lord, you're there. You're a faithful God. And we proclaim your faithfulness today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a good, good hand. Praise everybody. You know, uh, a couple of things that we have going on. Number one is uh, week after week after week, we come together and we bring the Lord's tithe and our offering in. And, you know, when we do that according to the word, not, not mechanically, not checking a box, but because it's something that's from the heart. Giving starts right here. It doesn't start with your checkbook. It starts in the heart. But that, that parallel where, where our tithe, where our giving is, is that's where your heart will be also. And so thank you for just continually o obeying the Spirit of God and making happen what happens in the body of Christ. That's the kingdom is advanced. Amen. And then next week, as we have the first uh, Sunday of every month, we have our partnership class. That's our membership class, partnership. And if you have not become a member, you've been praying, you've been a partner of Ocean Church, and you're saying, I really think this is where the Lord has me. Come and join us at 9 a.m. over in our youth center. We would love to have you, and it's going to be a great weekend. Pastor Kyle is going to bring the word to us today from, he's preaching here live, and then he'll be live in Cape for 1045. But I'm excited about Pastor just bringing the word to us. I know he's studied, he's ready, and uh, we're going to have a good time this morning. So if you're a guest here today, thank you for being with us at Ocean. We welcome you. We're so honored you're here. And take a, just a moment to turn around and say hi to somebody. Welcome to Ocean Church. Ready to go? Well, good morning, church. Good morning. I don't want to ever assume, uh, me standing in front of you, that you all know who I am. Uh, you may be here for the very first time or watching. Welcome. My name is Kyle Strom. I get the great honor and privilege to be up at our Cape Coral campus. And Pastor Josh asked me uh, if I would share with you today, and I said, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I said it would be an honor and a privilege to share the word with you today. You know, we're at the end of June, about to step into July. 
And I remember as a kid, I would try to hold on to summer, but it always slipped through my hands. And so I, I pray, moms and dads, kids, that you're having a wonderful summer. Don't worry, it's not over yet. Still got all of July. But you know, we, we vacation differently, we relax differently. Um, I know Pastor Jim loves to go to the beach and kick back, soak in some sun. For others, it's going to the mountains or maybe even camping. Uh, we do more of a glamping. We, we're not tent camper, campers. Um, but it looks different for all of us. And so our pastor, how he relaxes is he uh, takes his family of eight, jams them into a van, drives across the country for days and hours on end, and that's how they relax. And that's what they're doing right now. So pray for him, continue to pray for him and the family as they're away. You know, it's really important that he would get good time with his family, be present, and making great, great memories. If you would turn uh, into your Bibles or however you get the Bible to Proverbs 3, we're going to be starting in verse 5. And as you're turning there, we're continuing our series, Christ the Healer, and today we're going to be putting a, a bow on the series. But we're going to be in Proverbs 3, and starting in 5, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And I'm going to take a time out. I forgot. Can we stand? Let's stand. Let's honor the Lord. We're, we're going to back up. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord, turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Lord, we need you now. Father, we thank you for who you are. Lord, as we learn about you through your word today, Lord, let us... Let our hearts just be uh, so excited. And Lord, most of all, let us be joyful and let's have fun today as we get to know who you are. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. 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 You may be seated. I don't know if you know this, but you can have fun here at church. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have fun. Uh, just the last four weeks, we've been looking at different aspects uh, of healing. We were looking at suffering and what the Word does for our lives and communion. And last week, Pastor Jim did a great job, uh, unbelievable job, of explaining the Holy Spirit and what role he plays in our lives. And today, we're going to be looking at an aspect of you and I, we're believers, we're walk, walking with Jesus. And we're walking in this physical world, in this dark world, and it seems to get darker and more crazy as the day goes on, doesn't it? But what does it look like for you and I to walk in this life, living a life of praise? And that's what we're going to be focusing on this morning, praising in Jesus. What, what does that look like? But before I think we can cross the, the, the start line, we have to plant and we have to build, like any builder, you, you build a good foundation, a firm foundation. In 1 Peter 2, it talks about a cornerstone. The, the cornerstone that the world, the builders, the world rejects, and as they reject it, it now becomes a stumbling block. It, it, they trip over it. But for you and I, this is where we plant our lives on the cornerstone. It is true. Not, no cracks. It is even as firm. But what are we putting on that? And I think before we can jump into praise, we need trust. Trust before praise. See, before I think we can fully, authentically praise Jesus, we have to fully trust him. And what does trust look like? What is trust? Trust is a surrendering. It's a waving the white flag of our lives, our our desires, our wants, our fears, uncertainties, and it says, I'm, I'm putting that on you, Lord. But how can you fully trust someone that you do not know? How do you, how do you I don't think I can trust somebody that I don't know personally. And this is what Jesus is talking about, that he goes, I want a relationship with you, but not just any relationship. I want an intimate relationship. And because of that, that we can know him so well that we're knowing his ins and outs, we're knowing his character, we're knowing who he is, how he loves, his promises for us, his, his presence in our lives, 
This is, happens when we walk alongside and we're getting to know Jesus personally. If we go back to our, our keynote verse, uh, we're looking at five, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. See, Lord is always going back to the heart. Proverbs 4.23, it says, from the heart, everything flows. It's the central tr- for our lives as believers. It's the heart. It's a heart issue. It's not the understanding. It's not the head knowledge that we have. You know, if I see my kids acting a way, or maybe they're going in a direction that I'm, I'm seeing that I don't like, my tendency is to try to fix the problem, to fix the, the, the attitude, or fix the behavior. But we have to get back to the heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, true, true trust comes from the heart. If I go to my wife of 17 years, you don't believe it or not, it's actually our wedding anniversary today. Yeah, today. You don't mean that. You don't mean that. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, she's actually, we, we decided, or she decided to do a little something different for our anniversary today. She decided to take our kids and leave me all alone today. Can you believe that? They're leaving after the service and leaving me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to be eating junk all, all week here. But if I would go to my wife and say, honey, I, I love you. I trust you completely with all my head knowledge. I do. My head knowledge goes pretty deep. Yeah. No, it's a heart. Why? Because I know my wife. I've been walking with her for 17 years. I know her ins and outs. I know her facial expressions. I can look over her right now and, and she can tell me how I'm doing. She says I'm, I'm a little shaky, so I gotta, I gotta do a little bit better. See, I know that because I've spent time with her. Psalms 9:10 says, those who know your name trust in you. For you, O Lord, do not depend or don't abandon those who search for you. For you know your name and trust in you. Why? We're knowing Jesus. We're getting to know him. And this understanding, depending on our own understanding, you know, full trust, if we are not fully trusting somebody with our heart, then if we say we trust, and all of a sudden life happens, rubber meets the road, and all of a sudden things come in our lives that are hard, we will take that trust back because we're trying to figure it out ourselves. See, Jesus does not live in a way that you and I live. He is not on our level. He has a vision above. He is not looking at the things that we're looking at. And so if we're walking into a situation and it looks like a dead end to you and I, Jesus says, no, 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 I have a perspective that that dead end is just a waiting room. Isaiah 55 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He has perspective that you and I do not have. He is higher. And if we know him so well, then we know that he is seeing things differently. Do you know you and I are like water? Water flows the, the path of least resistance. Man, we love a smooth path, don't we? A nice cobblestone path. But Jesus has perspective, and he goes, you know what? I want you to take a right in the thickest part of this forest. And as you go through this forest, you're going to fall. You're going to skin your knees. You're going to get whipped in the face. And it's going to be hard. But I have a perspective that you don't. And as you're going through this path, you're going to be building a character. You're going to have stamina. You're going to come out stronger than you ever would be if you were on this nice, smooth cobblestone path. See, God has a perspective that you and I don't. Do you know him? Do you trust him? It's only through personal relationship that our trust deepens. It builds this foundation. Our praise can flow freely and so deep when we know Jesus. And this is where true praise comes out of. It's this trusting in Jesus. See, true praise, praise opens the door to our hearts for God's presence to fill our lives. 
It opens the door to our hearts so God's presence can fill our lives. And see, when we have this, and then when the praise comes from our heart out our mouths, do you know praise never goes down? It's always up. It's always up. Why? Because he is looking down and he sees things that you and I don't see. Do you trust the Lord? Do you trust him? See, if we, if we have this foundation of trust and we're believing, even that we don't understand, we're believing that he has the best thing for us. And how does, what, is, what is a practical way for you and I to praise? And I believe the practical way is we have to be intentional with our praise. We have to live a life of intentionality. You know, all of you came intentional today. You woke up, you put your, your clothes on, some took showers, some, and you came with intentional. You know, the first time I asked Callie out to the first time we went on a date, it was probably like a month just with our schedules, and we talked a few times, but she lost her voice in that time, and it was so far when I saw her, I forgot what she looked like. So I forgot, I don't know what she sounded like, and now I forget what she looked like. And so going on this date, I was a little bit nervous, and so I was in the room, uh, living room, waiting for her to come out, and she comes out, and literally, you guys, my jaw hit the floor. I was just like, oh my word, that girl's gonna go out with me. And we had this awesome first date, something right out of a movie. Second date was a nightmare, third was okay, <laughs> and then fourth, and then the rest is history. But man, I was so intentional getting to know Callie Odessa McCollum. I would call her in the morning, call her at night, show up to her work with flowers, write little notes, take her on day trips. Man, I was intentional about getting to know her. This is what you and I need to do in our lives. We need to be intentional with our praise. Psalms 34.1 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. This psalm is from David, and we all know David that was anointed by Samuel as a young boy comes on the scene, the whole Goliath situation, and now he's in this stratosphere, and everybody knows him. And now Saul gets so jealous, a spirit comes over him, and now he wants David murdered. He wants to kill David. And now David is on the run. So David has this anointing on his life. And also now he finds himself running from Saul, living in caves, and now he's asking himself, what is going on? I, this, I don't understand this. And we see this in Psalms 59, and it says, they have set ambush for me. Fierce enemies are out there waiting. Lord, though I have not sinned or offended them, I have done nothing wrong, yet they prepare to attack me. Wake up, see what is happening, help me. Has that been you? Are you walking in a situation and be like, Lord, what's going on? I did not see this coming. But the one thing that David had, he had equity with the Lord. He had time with the Lord. The time in the field when he was watching over his sheep. David was searching after the Lord, speaking with him, getting to know his character. And even though he didn't understand or couldn't see what was happening in front of him while these things were happening, he did not lose trust. Why? Because he knew Jesus so well. In just a few verses in 59, he goes, but as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love, for you have been my refuge, a place of safety. When I am distressed, oh, my strength to you, I sing praises. For you, oh God, are my refuge, the God who shows me unfailing love. He was intentional with his praising because he trusted Jesus. You know, God goes back to this heart issue. It is a personal relationship that we accept Jesus in our hearts and we praise him out of that. But it doesn't stop there. It's, it comes that we are a body of believers, that we need to be together when we praise. Psalms 11, 111, one, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. You and I, we need to surround ourselves with godly men and women in our lives. 
that can speak truth to us, that can come and say, hey, I see that you're going through a situation, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our praise on Jesus. And in the assembly, church, singing praises in worship this morning, there, you know, there's something that stirs in our hearts, in our souls. You know, we just came off the best week ever. And you know, there's something that is so encouraging when you see little souls praising Jesus with all their hearts. Oh my goodness. When I was up in Cape and we were singing and Pastor Brandon was, he went out into the audience and he was asking, it's like, why do we raise our hands when we praise the Lord? And you should have heard these answers from these little, these little souls. It was so precious. But this one little girl says, I raise my hands because Jesus is in my heart. Mm. I wanted to start crying. He's not in my head. He's in my heart. We need each other to praise Jesus. It brings something within us. There's a book called The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. And Brother Lawrence was a simple man. He lived in a monastery in Paris, and he was a cook. And just a very simple man, but he lived a life of never wanting to be outside the presence of God and always praising him. Transforming a mundane task into praise in the noise and clutter of my kitchen while several persons are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in as great tranquility as if I were upon my knees at the blessed sacrament. In the mundane task of life, while you're at the office, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna praise Jesus. Moms, in the craziness of Target while your kids are screaming their heads off, I'm going to stop and say, I'm going to praise the Lord. We're going to praise Jesus. We're going to be intentional with our praises. You know, this intentionality, being intentional, it's discipline. And I know that's a four-letter word for some. I know it was for me. Discipline? You mean I have to read the Bible every day? That's crazy. But what happens is discipline, the repetitive, going back, keep going, intentional. Discipline turns into delight. Now we're delighting in the Lord. We're knowing him so well. Lord, you are good. Because what praise does, praise takes the focus off our situations, what we're going through, and puts it on Jesus. It takes the focus off everything that's negative, everything that may be befalling in, in our lives, and it puts on Jesus where it's only him could heal, only him that can do the work in our lives. I praise the name of Jesus. Amen? I want you to watch my friend Tom and see what praise has done for his life. I'd like to say this is my story, but it's not. It's the story of Tamaris and Tom. I know God was there the whole time, but he put her there for me because I needed her. Going through 14 years of a kidney transplant, it wasn't years, but mere months. From that diagnosis that your kidneys are failing, that I went into full kidney failure. At that visit, when I was Learning that I had to go on dialysis, I was looking out over the waters of the intercoastal and I knew that God was with me at that point. We finished all the testing. We got the phone call. Everything's ready to go. I hadn't been on dialysis for one month at that point. And everything went wrong in 30 minutes. We found out that my donor and his family didn't want to donate the kidney right now. They weren't ready. Everything was lost in just a minute. We sat back and we stayed for six months and we didn't do anything. We just huddled, our church family huddled around us. Finally, David, my brother said, 
it's time. I know that I want to give you my kidney and you need to have it. A couple months later, we found out that we were all ready to go. We were going to have our surgery. We had the transplant. Everything went well. For years, everything went well. And then in 2015, five years later, my arm had an aneurysm the size of a golf ball from the AV fistula that they use for dialysis. We had to disconnect it. Everything went back to normal. In the midst of COVID, for those of you who remember COVID or maybe you forgot COVID like I would like to, we had a rejection event unlike anything we had experienced. The protein levels coming out of my urine was so high, supposed to be no more than 300. We were in the 9,000 range. We went to Gainesville and we got a biopsy. Next test, nothing. The prayers that our church family had thrown out. Wow, healed. And then a mere three years later, I was diagnosed with diabetes, crushing. After the diagnosis, we found out that I have to take insulin every day and for every meal. We were brokenhearted. Why? Why us? Why me? Why can't I just be healed? The second half of 1 Peter 5, 9 says that there are believers all over the world that are experiencing the same pain that you are. There was a time when I was on dialysis that I didn't know if I was gonna live. There were days I didn't care if I lived. All I knew is, is I did. And at the time, my girls were in their teens. I didn't know if I'd see grandkids. I didn't know if I'd see them get married, grow up. And there's not a day now. They're older now. I have four grandkids that I pray, that I just praise God every day. And I just sit there in awe and praise the fact that I'm here for this. I get to see it all when I didn't think I would. Amen. Amen. He's praising Jesus through it all, through the pain, intentional. Just as we close, we have to be direct, but the Lord says it's an invitation. It's an invitation to praise me. The Lord is never forceful in that. He simply stands at our hearts, and it's an invitation. I'm knocking. I'm here. Revelations 3.20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. See, Jesus is not standing and he is pounding and yelling and says, you better acknowledge me. You better praise me. No. He's just simply there. See, Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He will direct you. Have you ever walked into a room and nobody acknowledged you? How does that make you feel? Not so good. This is what Jesus wants. He's in the rooms of our lives. He's all around. And he's just asking, hey, are you gonna, will you acknowledge me? Will you praise me? Psalms 19.1, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. We just have to open our eyes and see how good God is. He's all around. 
months ago, I was doing the fun things of life and paying bills and looking at our, our, our finances, and I just got really angry because I'm looking, and I looked at our account, and I said, how in the world did we spend this much money this month? Have you ever been there? Oh, yeah, especially now. And I was, I was upset, and I was like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, this fear starts r like racing in my heart. All right, well, we're not going to have enough money to pay for this. Now we can't pay for our house, and you know, and all then just goes down and down. keep keep going. <laughs> I could go to a dark place, but the Lord was so gentle, and He was just whispering. He's like, "Hey, have you have you seen the things I've done in your life? Have you seen the times where people gave us money out of the blue?" gave us a car out of the blue. Friends, let us move in with them for months on end Why we were down and out. This time and time again, a blessing. And I said, yes, Lord, I'm sorry, yes. I praised him, but I was still upset, if you know what I meant. So I went to the pantry to get some sugar. Come on, come on. <laughs> And as I opened the pantry door, a piece of paper just went, came fluttering down. It was very strange. I was like, where did this piece of paper come from? And we had uh, cookbooks on the top shelf, and one of it opened up, and this piece of paper came down, and I picked it up, and it was a count from 2008, this investment count that I uh, started, throw a little bit of money in, and there's hardly any money in that. And if you guys remember back in 2008, the market was not so good, and I had my own business at the time, and I just couldn't afford it, so I didn't pay any more in this account, and I totally forgot about it. 15 years ago, totally forgot about it, until now, this piece of paper. So I, I wondered if that account was still open, so I went online, did a little research. <laughs> you know, things accrued over the last 15 years, and now there's money in there, a lot more money. And I just had to pause and say, Lord, are you kidding me? Of all the places of opening that pantry door and that piece of paper flying down, and that count I never even remembered, and now there's money in there. But did it fix my immediate need? No. But now, the confidence, the trust, the praising that I came out of my heart, say, Lord, <laughs> I'm not even worried, because I know you've got me. The track record in my life, you are good, and I'm gonna praise you. See, the Lord is good. His invitation is all around. We just have to open our hearts and our eyes to it. Hebrews 13, five. Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name. Out of our hearts and our lips, we're going to profess his name, that he is good. See, the invitation is no matter what you're walking through, whether it's fear, whether it's a, a diagnosis that is not good, that maybe your kids have walked away from the faith. Maybe you're walking along in, along in life in pain constantly. That we're going to say, no, Lord, you are good. And there's some people here and then watching that I want you to hear my heart in this. That you need to start praising Jesus. Because if you live in the negativity the negativity will take over your life and it will be poison for your soul. But the Lord is saying, no, praise me. Take the focus off you and put it on Jesus. Will you praise him today? Would you close your eyes, bow your heads? As I talked about this invitation, the Lord is extending an invitation. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never experienced Jesus. You've never asked Jesus into your heart. I just wanted to give you that opportunity. Maybe as I was sharing this morning, you, you're, you're feeling a stirring in your soul and in your heart. And you go, you know what? I, I want to accept Jesus. I want him to come and live in my life. 
If that's you with nobody looking, if that's you, would you just slip up your hand if you want to accept Jesus into your life this morning? Amen. Amen. I see you. Amen. If you raised your hand, just in the quietness of your, your heart, just repeat this. Say, Jesus, I love you. I need you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I turn the other way. I run to you. Jesus, I love you. If that's you, you just experienced Jesus. You just accept Jesus into your heart. Family, can we give it up for those who just accepted Christ this morning? Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for those who accepted you. Lord, we need you. Lord, your invitation is in front of us. It's all around us. Lord, let us praise you for who you are in our lives. Lord, I pray for everyone that's going through something in their lives, physical, mental, emotional. Lord, let our hearts would be stirred towards you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand? We're going to go into one more song, but I don't want this just to be any other song that we sing as we leave, that we say with our hearts, Lord, we're trusting in you, and I'm going to praise you no matter what I feel and what I'm going through. I'm going to praise you this morning. Can we do that this morning? Let's praise. What a good word this morning, amen. Listen, I want to invite our uh, prayer team to go ahead and come on up to the altar, if you will. Um, yeah, altar team, if you guys, ladies, will go ahead and come. One of the great things that we have about a word that we liked we had today with Pastor Kyle is what do we do with it? We don't just put it in our pocket, we put it into practice, amen. But if you have a need this morning, no matter how big or small it is, our team is here to pray with you. And so let me just pray over you as we get ready to go. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for such a good word for Pastor Kyle. We submit our lives to you, knowing that you are at work in our lives, your plan, will, and purpose. And we honor you for it. Bless your people today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, have a good day, everybody. Good. Rest of your weekend, we love you. Thanks for being with us at Ocean. Our altars are open, everybody.